All right, they're asking me, I, I got the suit. I'm um, going over to uh, Mr. Windegger's uh, funeral hall after this. So uh, um, he was here when I was here. Uh, athletic director, obviously, and a uh, legend. And uh, yeah, it meant a lot to us who've been around for a long time and uh, uh, come and gone. But um, he, it, what, you know, what he did at TC, it was a one-man operation. I was telling the frogs, uh, Frogs today. I was telling them uh, you know, I, I had to go uh, ask, and, and uh, when I was finishing up, I needed uh, different times for sure. No, in a pre NIL, but I had to go ask him for uh, uh, after finishing up senior year. We won a couple of conference championships. We, uh, I was a, they gave me some awards. I was a scholar athlete, if you can believe that. Wasn't a very good, smart crew, I guess, uh, I was going against uh, of the year, but. Um, I had to go ask, I had to finish up a class or two in the summer and I didn't know where I was gonna live and didn't have any money. And I had to go ask for, if they would pay for the class, a little different world now. And uh, some money, uh, if I could get the scholarship check, the um, the uh, um, the room and board. Cause I lived in the dorms for four years, so I had somewhere to live. So I didn't have, and I didn't have any money. So I was all nervous to go talk to him. He's like, okay, we'll take care of it. We'll take care of him. So don't worry. but. Uh, Always came back and saw him when I came back through here, and um, he was kind of the connection. Our coaches weren't here anymore, and so uh, he was always that connection to me. And there was, there was uh, when I got hired, he was here, and so uh, he meant a lot to TCU. And it was a different time, and you know they didn't have these great offices. It was a one-man office in the on the side of the arena down there, uh, and, and I remember that office. as nice as all these offices they built up there for these guys, that's for sure. But he meant a lot to us, and so uh, I just thought I'd say that before you asked me why I got a suit on. Uh, but he was a special guy and a special friend, and special at TCU. So uh, it's stuck for uh, NCAA tournament. Um, off today. So we kind of figured, you know, Sunday we practiced, thought Friday possibly, so we planned it out to get a day off. and. One of the things with the tournament is you, you want to be, you want to get stuff in, you want to practice, but at the same time you don't want to overwork them. And you're all excited when you find out where you go on, on that Sunday and you want to play and you want to get ready. And now we're not playing until Friday and, and the late game on Friday. So there's time, there's time, uh, but yet there's things we got to get done. So uh, practices the last two days, we had, we, and plus we're banged up a bit. You know, I mean, the man hurt the ankle in the game. Ernest obviously hasn't been the same. Uh, Esam had gotten his face hit in practice and had his teeth rearranged. Uh, so we had that was before the tournament. So we weren't quite going into that thing as ready as I wanted to be. And um, but we got one win. Uh, um, couldn't make a layup against uh, Houston, and um, we're shot. But I liked how we defended in that tournament. I felt we made progress. I felt we got better. I felt we got. Uh, things we emphasized, the things we wanted to get better, we did. And so I feel better defensively where we're at. Offensively, we've always been good. You know, there's going to be days where we don't make shots, and that was one of them. Uh, but the defense, the rebound, these guys are consistent. And to out-rebound the best rebound team in the country by 15, that's pretty good. You get 30 offensive rebounds, that's pretty good. I wish we could have finished with some uh, 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 putbacks, which was uh, the two things that we do well, offensive rebound finish and then transition. Our transition numbers were uh, abysmally poor, and so uh, a unique game. But um, Utah State, uh, I, I was just telling these guys in here, uh, JW, like Utah State, I know they've been winning for years. People don't understand the tradition at that place. I mean, uh, I don't know, were you guys in the Mountain West? Was that TCU playing them back in the day? I don't know. They were in the same time. Not, not the same time, so. Um, they have a home court advantage unlike no others. They win, they pack it, the students are right there on the court. They're, they, uh, they've won. I mean, Stu Morrill, Ryan Odom, uh, Stacy, they, they've had great coaches, and uh, they have another good coach in uh, Dan Sprinkle, so I'm very familiar with him. And uh, um, watch them, they're very good. They're balanced, surprised at how balanced they are offensively, inside and out. They play through the big guy. Uh, so we'll. Uh, 
we'll keep working and, and preparing, but we know they're very good. They won the Mountain West. That's uh, all you need to know about how good they are. And uh, it's going to be quite a matchup. So, uh, but great to be uh, in the tournament again for uh, uh, TCU, our, our, our brand, and for, uh, uh, as I said, and Stephen pointed out, what, 70 million people put out uh, do brackets to 100 million. Was, uh, the number I'd heard is, we tend to exaggerate as coaches, so I said 100 million. Stephen corrected me and said it was 70 million. So uh, uh, um, that's, a, that's a good thing to be a part of. So, Coach, uh, eight seasons with the Horn Frogs, what mm. makes this team so special? Uh, this year, I mean, you know, transition, we're best in the country, um, but we weren't the other day. So, you know, what we want to be is consistent defensively and rebounding. I have thought this team could get to a, this level. We haven't got to where I thought we could get to, but defensively has been our, our challenge. And like I said, this last week's uh, hopefully some growth in that area. Great kids. Um, you know, I, like I said, I've tried everything to get better defensively with them. I think I said that in the last uh, – uh, get together. Um, it's been a it's been a challenge. It really has. But it's three new guards. It's you know a couple new big guys. It kind of makes sense why we've had some. Uh, it hasn't happened right away. But I think we've made some uh, good strides defensively in these last couple of days, last couple of weeks, I should say. And we've changed some things. So I've ad I've adjusted. Um, they've picked some things up. I've pushed them. I've challenged them. I've coached them. I've yelled at them. Um, tried everything and uh, but I think we're, we're, we we made some strides so I think it's a uh, uh, I think we can do some things um, better uh, down the stretch here and I think we I hope we're hopefully we're playing our best we need everybody healthy I, I'll see you man tomorrow he didn't practice to uh, yesterday or Sunday um, Ernest is still uh, not where I'd hoped he'd be um, it hasn't been for about a month and a half, so that hasn't helped us either. Uh, so there's some things we've had to go through, but everybody goes through these things, and hopefully it comes together right now. Speaking of yeah. Eman, um, he has talked frequently about his group of players that have come through the program. Mm. There's a Utah State's tradition there. What has that group, including him, done for this program, now the tournament three years in a row? Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I mean, well, I, I think it's uh, – the, the, you talk about the tournament, and, and, and the, those numbers are uh, are obvious, and uh, for uh, for us, I mean, it's hard. I mean, Steve came up with a stat. I mean, only 12 teams have done what we've done in the last winning, getting to the tournament, winning games in the tournament. Uh, those things are hard to do. I mean, you see the teams that didn't get in the tournament this year, how hard it is. It's become harder to get to the tournament. Uh, there's 363 teams. Like, I mean, to keep this in perspective, like, I mean, it's 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 a uh, you know, uh, you know, I mean, go, go down the list. I mean, like, what, 85, 86 make bowls, 120 teams. Like, it's, 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 it's just hard to do, and gotten harder. And there's, and then you have automatic bids that factor in. So, and you got the bigger conferences now, and then you put us in the best conference in the country. So, but what I'll talk about is, is um, really an outgoing crew. I mean, Eman loves to get out, and go talk to people, and he. That so eloquent and so uh, 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 and, and so uh, open with his his feelings. Micah is the same way. So I, that group is Micah, Jacoby, Xavier, and Eman. It's kind of uh, now there's some Chuck's Chuck's part. They didn't come in at the same time, but Chuck's been there too. So they're just really outgoing. They're all graduating. Um, some are working on master's degrees or getting master's degrees. Um, you know, and, and yet at the same time, you hear about the transfer portal, the NIL, and but these guys have done everything right on and off the floor. And, you know, it's something that, yes, we've won more here, and it's something like that, but the, they talk about the kids that we brought in, too, that represent TCU. And, you know, we haven't had – that stuff matters to me, and it probably matters to me more because I went here. And – uh so there's ways to get better. There's ways to uh, and, and bring in the right guys who represent the uh, university. And uh, I think we've done those things. And, and that's a great example for Jazz. Those four, and I guess Chuck is in that, the fifth on that. Uh, he didn't come in at the exact same time, but um, he, he's outgoing. He's mad. He'll get a master's. I mean, he's finishing a master's this year. I mean, like, 
there's a lot of things that some may, might say. I won't say they're, they're wrong with college uh, athletics and what's going on. There's changes. There's everything. But we got guys that are getting degrees and master's degrees. So something's something's good going on, and uh, uh, we're we're a, a big part of that. Defensively, what do you think the biggest challenge will be against Utah State? Uh, the big kid. Uh, his name's great. So uh, what else do you need to know? I mean. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he's. It, uh, I thought Jamie was tough to raise as a kid. Uh, 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 the girl's name, but uh, to be man, great uh, is a, is a, quite a challenge. He's lived up to it. He's gotten better. I guess he's from England, and I don't know. That, I mean, how those guys. He's gotten better. He didn't play a lot at Montana State. They brought him with them, so that's unique. Um, coached him at his alma mater, and then took him to the, another school. Uh, Danny. Um, but he's a way better player than he was at Montana State, so he's gotten better. Uh, plays through him. Uh, he can face and drive it. He, 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 he's a playmaker. Um, somewhat undersized, but doesn't play like, plays big. And uh, so he's the thing, but they have old and balanced uh, around him too as well. And um, they, uh, it's funny they're saying that they have no guys returning, but he's got like four guys that he coached before. So I think that's a little misleading. So, uh, uh, but um, that's what we do as coaches, mislead. You coached in tough conferences forever. The Big, big East was crazy when you were yeah. there. And now this is Big 12 crazy too. Yeah. ACC, don't forget that one either, when it was that's the best. Yeah, yeah, when it was the best. So. Right. It doesn't help. Co it doesn't help coaches. I don't recommend it, it for coaches. I, it, it helps to recruit, I think, in you Indian tone. You know, I, I think it. You know, you, you would think, and in, in sometimes, but it's you know what, it's it's also good to come in winning you know 16 in a row, and 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 that ain't happening in our conference, um, or even five in a row. You know, what I mean, like that ain't happening in our conference either, because I don't think we have anybody with five in a row wins. Uh, even Iowa State, I think they lost their last conference game or nicked the last so uh, badly. You know, I mean, like, it, it, it beats you up. How are you going to be physically, I think, um, is, is probably as important, you know. Um, so it's good. You've seen everything. Um, but it, there's there's uh, challenges that come with it. Um, but. I don't think how you did that tournament ever seems to correlate to how you do in the NCAA tournament, the previous tournament. That's what I've seen, and, and uh, um, every game is different. But that, that sometimes the quick turnaround can be a challenge. We don't seem to have that right now. Uh, but um, you know, I, I wish we were 100% healthy, and today, yesterday we weren't. But maybe we are by tomorrow and, and, and Friday. You talked a little bit about uh, the defensive side of the ball. Kind of the execution from an offensive standpoint against Houston. How do you want to see this offense take a step forward against uh, Utah State outside of making that? Yeah, uh, transition. You know what you, you, you got to do what you do well, and we're a three good three point shooting team. Or by the numbers, we don't shoot a lot, but we're percentage wise are good. Uh, transition, obviously. So like, if you don't do the things you do well, you just spent your entire time. You you, you got part, like if your best player doesn't play well. Doesn't make shots like you can't like change midstream and like uh, you know go to the, somebody else. You know what I mean you've already he's already missed ten shots or something. You know what I mean so the, I, I th you got to do what you do well and and, and do it well again uh, in, in the term. The, the defense is the thing we, we say be the constant and the rebounding. Um, uh, so that's that's what we tried to develop. That's what we've tried to get to. And like I said, I think our defense has has a, you know, got to a point where it's. I think can win uh, win some games, keep us in games at least, and to be honest, it kept us in the Houston game with with the you know the record setting you know uh, in, in the wrong wrong areas uh, first half. Um, I mean, uh, so so that, that that's what we want. But I mean, you know, if if your guards don't play well, you got problems, and uh, um, and if your lead scorer doesn't play, you know, you can't like he's just not he's he's. You don't know he didn't play well until he didn't play well. Um, so that's that's or didn't put the ball in the basket. Um, so those are the those are the the challenges. So you got to do going back to it. You got to do what you, what you do well, 
you, you've got to, you, you can't come up short in that area. Avery's kind of been the guy that really plays well in transition. I know it hasn't been the greatest stretch for him recently. I guess what's his fears? What have those conversations with him been like? Yeah, I mean, he's a great kid. I mean, we just, uh, he's going to play his 20, 25 minutes like he has the whole time. He's co coming off the bench right now, which, you know, we've, we've kind of felt like we've had kind of six starters all year long uh, between those guys. And um, really, like I said, so there, those guys, you know, there's 20 to 25. E-Man and Mike are then at 30 and, uh, and above, if, uh, depending on some things. So those guys, because of their offense and their defense, they're two of our best defenders as well, um, have been out there. So, I mean, you know, I mean, we, we talked to him in practice yesterday. There's a couple times I thought he passed up a, a catch and shoot three, which he needs to take. And uh, you know, he tends to over penetrate. But his defense, I think, has continued to improve as it has Jameer's. And to be honest, that's probably the best, uh, the most important area that we've had to improve on. They're just uh, getting used to our principles, ball pressure, uh, activity, cons constant, sticking to, to our rules. Uh, they tended to kind of go do their own thing a little bit more um, and defensively. And, and so that's where we've. Uh, seen them. So I, you know, I talked to him yesterday about you know taking the open three, um, getting off it, which I thought he did a good job in in the last game, and we had good shots in the last game. Like we didn't we didn't we didn't make them. We didn't make layups, um, but uh, I, I thought we uh, I thought we made some good decisions early, especially that just didn't result in uh, uh, baskets. A lot of times we see teams get to the tournament and change personnel rotations, how they do things, you know, with a, a roster that you've run with 10 guys getting a lot of time, is there any temptation to, to sh shuffle roles and that kind of stuff this time of year, or are you going to stick with the full 10? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know to me to change too much. I mean, we've, we've just, I mean, I don't know if, we've talked about different starters a, a couple different times, but I don't see that as changing our thing too much. They're playing about the same minutes, so I don't think that that's been a dramatic change. That's more of a, you know, for you guys change. Uh, but I've said all along, like, you know, Jameer, the, the guards, we were kind of always going to be figuring out. And really, we've made the, the, the challenge to our guys or, or stress the, the, it's who plays better defense. We're, we're looking to get better defensively. And it's helped us. It's helped us get better defensively. And again, we, you know, we had our five man out for the last six games, uh, wasn't healthy, to be honest, and things. So we've had some challenges. Jacoby, uh, you know, healthy early, still seems to be, I mean, yesterday he pulled off his shoe, you know, on a, for his foot uh, in practice. So, I mean, you know, we've, we've had some challenge. Hasn't all been cl uh, clear sailing. And again, you lose your, we're better off when Ernest is on the floor defensively. When you, he misses a bunch of games down the stretch uh, and then is not, he didn't, he didn't even practice going into the Big 12 games. Didn't practice in the St. Fort. So, I mean, like, we're doing some things you shouldn't be doing, uh, but we're in that position. You know, you, you don't prefer, you don't like to be in that position, but we are. I wish it was a perfect world, but it, 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 you tend to find some challenges in, in this thing. So you mentioned the teams who were left out. I'm not going to ask you specifically about yeah. that, but um, there was some talk about the Ken Palm reading has been different from the, turn, the committee's yeah. choice and all that. Yeah. I'm curious, from your perspective, when you're prepping during the season, I know you have numbers that go far right. advanced beyond that, but how accurate do you think Ken Palm and those statistics tend to be, right. and does it surprise you when you see some of those? Well, no, I've been through it a long time. I mean, uh, um, you guys keep making me say how old I am and uh, how long I've been doing it, but um, uh, we, um, um, I look at, Ken Palm's the one we look at, but it has other statistics as part of it, not just the ranking, so it has offensive efficiency, you know, where your weakness is, are you turning over too much, are you not, you know, making free throws, it, it, it speaks to all those things, when you click on the, you gotta pay the thing and then, then they give you that, but we, I love their stuff. And we were significantly higher in that than the, than the net. Um, and, you know, obviously the net, we don't know how they manufacture the net because they want to have their own net and, uh, and do the reveal and make it like the CFP and, and do it. it hasn't quite worked to like the CFP level, but that's the purpose of it. So it's hard to schedule and do things to the net when you don't know what the criteria is of, of the net. So. Um, but we, I like Ken Palm. I know it's always different. It seems to me that sometimes Ken Palm is more predictive so that as it gets closer together, they, 
they get the as you play longer in the season they come and, and they're more similar that didn't happen for us as the year when I actually went the other with Ken Palm we were going better and the, the net we went so you know there's and again it's it, like what like we could have a great win and in, in the in what happened this in the uh, uh, Southland Conference could be more important a, a f effect on on you know who we played in November and when we didn't have four players and you know and so it, it, it's not going to be perfect we understand that but I I, I you know I, I'm finance economics econometrics ma major like I love analytics and numbers I've always have and had was incorporating it in what I did way before it was called analytics and the hot thing to do and before uh, um, uh, Moneyball came out, like I was doing this stuff, like this is this is part of it. So I love the numbers. You asked the wrong question when you guys want to get out of here. So uh, 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 I, I love the analytics. I love the numbers. I love to add add them up and and, and figure out uh, what it is. It helps us, and um, we chart everything, and uh, uh, we create our own uh, analytics of defense. We like they talk about what, who's. We every we have points for rebounding, points for not going, not crashing, great block out, not block out. I mean, like we we we've charted everything we got. So there's all different versions of it. But uh, I guess did I answer your question, or I just went a completely yeah, different way? You said it's pre money ball. Now you're dating yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the um, uh, you know, I mean, they say it's uh, it sorts them. They don't look at it. You know, I thought you were going to. Um, Teams that got left out, you had upsets, so you had bid stealers. So now it's even harder to get. I mean, like you're talking about a tournament that's 363 teams, 68 get in. There's automatic bids, which clearly aren't the best teams. So you take 20 of those out, just throwing out numbers. Now you take five bid stealers; they're not the best teams, all right. And, and so now all of a sudden, out of 363 teams, you've got the uh, uh, and the only thing that they make money on the NCA you've got the lowest percentage of teams getting in and playing in the NCAA tournament. So, like, you know, that's where those arguments, I thought that's where you were going on, on that. So, uh, um, I'm not saying what, what should happen or proponent or what, but I'm just saying, stating the, the facts, the obvious, uh, where it's at. So, it's good to be in it. It's good to be part of it. And uh, now we gotta go play well. Coach, with that being said, uh, the size of the tournament as it is, would you like to see it grow, stay the same, or just get smaller? Well, I just said, I'm not saying, I'm just giving you the facts behind it. I'm not making a, a, a judgment. I think with what just happened with the NIT, um, and I don't understand that, to be honest, um, certainly every situation is different. So there are some situations, but some of them don't make any sense to me. Um, but, um, what happened, the bid stealers, the NIT, something's got to change. And uh, you throw that all in together, something, something's got to change. Uh, now, I get it. It all comes down to money. And do you add four, do the extra games create more value? And we all think that it does, but as we found out with the CFP and going to these extra games, it didn't create as much value as they thought by adding those four extra games. But literally, like, if you look at the percentage, the CFP now is putting themselves in a situation where literally almost the same percentage of football teams will get to the CFP as the NCAA tournament. Think about that. Think about that. I mean, that's, you know, I mean, and then you talk about the 80 bowl teams and 86 or whatever it is. I mean, like, um, so uh, that's the argument. That's the, that's the coach's argument. I'm not saying either one, so. I'm not giving you an answer on that, but I think it's. I think uh, there's more open to it now at this point. But it's got to make more. It's got to make more, and it has to fit in the three weeks. That's the thing. It has to because of TV. It has to fit in uh, the three weeks. So I think you, at most you can go to 80, and I don't think you go to 80. But uh, um, but that's uh, 80. You could still play 16. Is that right? 16. Um, more, uh, you could play 16 uh, playing games, Tuesday and Wednesday. You said 100 million people filled out brackets, yeah. so 100 million people might like to see it. Yeah, <laughs> it, I, I would think, you would think. But that uh, that CFP thing to me was uh, uh, an eye-opener. 
they did not get the money value they thought with the four extra games. Uh, but they're not bidding against somebody. They didn't. They, they didn't. They didn't bid against somebody. We do have a, a situation where possibly um, the ESPN gets in and gets a bidding with uh, uh, TN, uh, C, CBS and TNT. So that's the uh, that that's the challenge. But of course, the NCAA is locked it in to uh, make sure that they're relevant and, and solvent for the next ten years or so. Going back to analytics just for a moment, I know that there's a whole swath of things that you can dive into right. and, and get lost in when it comes to numbers, but is there a specific data point or data set that you find yourself going to more frequently and more consistently? Like a certain a certain like rebounding well, margin? Well, simple, yeah, like simple. Like we, we go defensive <coughs> efficiency, offensive efficiency, and see mm -hmm. where we're ranked on that. Offensive, uh, num offensive rebound numbers, that's always been one we've always looked at. Mm -hmm. uh, over time, I've had to adjust. So you're asking that because we, in this, uh, as we've made this change and, it, and it adapted, we forced more turnovers. Which, if you force more turnovers, your rebound numbers won't be as good. So we've had to adapt that. There's only so many possessions you can win out, and so we've had to adapt to that uh, on the defensive end. So we always wanted to be plus 10 on rebound. It's really hard to go plus 10 when you're forcing a high amount of turnovers like we are. So that's that's an adjustment we've had to make on it. So uh, I'd say the offensive rebound numbers are probably the most consistent thing that we look at because um, we want to be great at that, and we always have been. We weren't great this year, um, but we've always been the, well, the pit. We're like best in the country on a regular basis. Um, here we've been good, but not as consistent. But we've changed you know, how we're playing, um, and the game. I mean, they changed the rules in, you know mid year. I mean, They've made changes to basketball mid-year, and like this year, they completely changed uh, the rules. Like right before the season started, like charge block is like numbers are completely changed because of uh, uh, just that that change. More scoring. One more question for Coach, and we got to go. We got the big fellows waiting here. The yeah, the stars we were just talking about. Yeah.